Hey everybody, I'm Ethan Allred, and in today's video, I am going to be showing you how to make sugar rockets. I'm also going to be showing you how they work and why we build them this way, so stick around. You don't want to miss this. So what is a sugar rocket? Well, a sugar rocket is a homemade model rocket motor using sugar and an oxidizer. So yes, sugar is used as rocket fuel. So why build a sugar rocket? Well, I'll give you two good reasons. The first one being money. Hobby rocketry motors can range from a couple dollars all the way up to about $25 per launch. This single D12 motor costs about seven bucks. So yeah, that can get expensive. A far more powerful sugar rocket can be made for under a dollar. Reason number two for building sugar rockets is it's extremely fun and rewarding. To be able to create something from scratch that launches 2,000 feet in the air, that's pretty satisfying. And this is how you do it. To begin this project, you are going to want a 3 quarter inch PVC pipe measuring exactly 5 inches in length. To create the mixture of rocket fuel, we are going to be using Spectricide Stump Remover. We are going to be measuring out 3 ounces of this. This particular stump remover is almost 100% potassium nitrate, which just so happens to be a perfect oxidizer for sugar rockets. The potassium nitrate right out of the bottle is kind of clumpy. It's almost like a fine salt, but we need it to be a powder. So we are going to put it in the blender and blend it up. Next, we will need powdered sugar. We will be measuring out one ounce of powdered sugar. Next, mix the potassium nitrate and powdered sugar together using a container. Shake it vigorously for about 20 seconds to make sure that it's mixed well. The more thoroughly mixed, the more effective the rocket fuel will be. Fun fact, potassium nitrate contains nearly 50% oxygen molecules by mass. That is a ton of oxygen, which is why it is one of the most popular ingredients for pyrotechnics and other types of explosives. And just a refresher, fuel needs oxygen to burn. Sugar being the fuel and potassium nitrate supplying the oxygen for the fuel, this creates a rapid burn which creates the liftoff of a sugar rocket. The next thing you'll need is some bentonite clay which you can find in a cheap bag of kitty litter. The bentonite clay in kitty litter is in large grains and we will need to turn it into powder using the blender as well. The next thing we'll need is a 3 quarter inch diameter ramrod, which we'll also use as a template to compress the powders into the PVC casing. The markings should be like so, an inch and a quarter, four and a quarter inches, and five inches. Now some people like to use wooden dowels for this. I prefer to use a 3 quarter inch bolt with the thread side cut off, leaving you with just a nice round shaft. The reason I chose to use the bolt over the dowel is because when you compress with the dowel, it ends up splitting and it just doesn't hold up as well as the bolt. Also, the bolt gives a lot more weight and compression onto your powders. So with powders being more compressed, I feel like you get a little bit better engine. Now, using a funnel, we will pour a little bit of bentonite clay down into the PVC pipe. Using our template and a mallet, we will compress the clay and continue to add clay until we reach our four and a quarter inch mark. Next, we will add our rocket fuel. Begin adding and compressing your rocket fuel until you reach your one and a quarter inch mark. Once compressed, add another three quarters of an inch of bentonite clay. The clay is acting as a plug on both sides of the rocket fuel. So the more highly compressed the clay, the better the plug. Next, using a 7 seconds drill bit, we are going to drill a hole three and three quarters to four inches deep, directly through the center of the bottom of the rocket engine. It's the safest to use your hand to do this, but I like to use a drill on low setting and without creating too much friction. If you're going to use a power drill, you want to drill really slowly and create as little friction as possible. Otherwise, it is possible for you to create enough friction to ignite the rocket fuel.
And that's it, your very own sugar rocket motor. So you might be wondering, how powerful is this rocket engine? Using these dimensions and measurements, this rocket engine is designed to be the equivalent of an F-class motor. This is about as big as you can go without needing a high-powered rockets permit or license. That being said, even though these are legal to make, they are illegal to transport. So I guess that you are supposed to build them where you're launching them and not at home and then go driving off into the boonies to shoot them off. So, so you might be wondering why we drill a hole all the way through the rocket engine and not just through the nozzle and then light it from there. The reason we hollow out the rocket fuel is because it gives way more surface area than just the flat bottom. The more surface area you have burning at a time, the more thrust that motor will produce. If you only have 3 quarters of an inch diameter, you only have 0.44 inches burning really slow all the way through your rocket, so it would last long but not give very much thrust. Not to mention you probably burn out through the side of the PVC pipe within just a few seconds. By hollowing a core out through the engine, just to begin, you are creating 1.96 inches of surface area, which is four times as much as if you were just flat. You're now burning from the inside out. As it takes off, it creates a lot more thrust because its surface area is getting a lot bigger really fast. And by the time it goes from 7 30 seconds diameter to three quarters, it is now going from under two inches to over seven inches of surface area. That is almost 17 times more surface area burning at a time than if you were just burning from a flat surface going upward. So yeah, if it wasn't hollowed out, it would just burn too slow to create enough thrust to, to launch and it would, just, it would just burn up the PVC pipe really fast. So that's why we do it this way. All right, so I hope you learned something about sugar rocket motors. Let's go outside and launch these. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you learned something new. If you like videos of interesting and curious projects like this one, please hit the subscribe button, like and share, and we'll see you next time.